Well, guys, I think we need to have a little bit of a chat, don't we? So, not to get too deep on you straight away, but usually I feel like a lot of time I can count on you a lot to give me advice or like suggestions on videos, etc. However, I'm a little bit, I wouldn't say upset, just more so disappointed that nobody told me how goddamn fun these factory 250 bikes were. My god, I ha literally, I've not used these since the latest factory pack released. Uh, as you know, I'm more of a 450 guy in this game. However, I signed up for the FTR Triple Crown series the other night, um, which is all based on, the, the track's all made by Kevin Fuela, uh, which we are running on right now, we'll get into that in a little bit. However, they're, uh, they're all raced on Canadian tracks, and it's a 250 series, uh, open to both OEM and factory. So I hopped onto the factory 250, not really expecting too much of a difference really, and these things are absolutely rapid. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. It is insane. Like, kind of takes me back to Beta 16 era. Like, I feel like we've almost got unlimited traction. The thing turns on a dime. Uh, you can kind of scrub the life out of it as well. And I think it might just be a lucky combination of these bikes compared with this track. However, it was so so fun for all of you passionate gamers you can now get 20 percent off all g fuel products worldwide by using code lins at checkout and for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel use code mxpr underscore lins 15 fxrracing.eu to get 15 percent off all links and codes are in the description down below enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe it was fun until we didn't actually get to race because it was the night that poboso's uh, master server went down and everything like, pooed itself uh, so I, I got to do a little bit of practice before and then i got to enjoy Enjoy qualifying and I managed to top quality which is nice good good to know that I still have that that pace in me at least when the, uh, the the big dogs don't really show up there was a couple of fast people but no one no one like absolutely insane so to speak without trying to hurt anyone's feelings there uh, but I, it was so much fun and I thought usually I probably wouldn't do a video on tracks like this or even just one-offs on random bikes I feel like everybody other than me has already ridden on However, I just thought it was so much fun to pass up, and if anybody else does manage to or get the, the enjoyment that I've got just from using this combo of bike and track, then um, I guess that's a W in my book, so it's a W overall. So the bike that I'm on right now is the Gas Gas 250 Four Stroke from the uh, Factory Bike Pack. It is completely stock, other than I've got a mids, or I've got the Spec 90 front tyre and the Spec 110 on the rear. Everything else is exactly as it comes. Uh, love the sound of it. I was originally riding the Yamaha the other night, which I like the sound of even more. However, I got my YouTube brain working and I'm just kind of trying to think of thumbnails, etc. And uh, the full red bike will definitely pop a lot brighter in the thumbnail once I've mixed the, uh, the colours about a bit than the Yamaha will with the blue front fender and the rest of it being black. So that, that's my only reasoning. Obviously, all the factory bikes handle exactly the same as each other. Uh, so it really doesn't matter at all which one you use. It's all just based on aesthetics. And uh, if, if you wasn't aware of that, just to kind of reiterate the fact, because I've had a few people uh, kind of wondering in live streams when I've mentioned this, is within the factory bike packs, say you are a 250 four-stroke rider, Say you're a 254 stroke rider and you just like a particular brand. Um, maybe you feel like you ride one bike better than you ride the other. I promise you that it is all placebo effect and that it's down probably based on either the sound mod making you ride a little bit different just from like audibly changing how you ride. I know I do that. Uh, or the other thing could be the cockpit view, just your view as well can affect how you feel like the bike's handling. Um, but 110% I can promise you that every single bike within its within each class handles the same as each other. So every 250 is the same, every 450 is the same, every 125 is the same, so on and so forth. Uh, think of them more as, instead of them being different bikes, think of them all as one bike just with a different model on it. Think of them almost like model swaps and you can tell that that's the case as well because um, if you load up the OEM bikes for example, uh, say you scroll through the bikes, if you pay extra or pay extra close attention to the wheels, you'll see that the wheels move slightly because they've all got their own unique pivot points, which uh, affects like the geometry and how they handle, etc. Uh, however, if you do it with the factory bikes, everything is in exactly the same place because they're all based in the uh, the same same points, I guess. Without knowing all of the technological terms for behind the scenes, being a little bit, um, I wouldn't say ignorant to that sort of stuff because I do find it interesting. It's just seems like a bit of a like a head. F to be honest, trying to 
just decode all of the poboso spaghettiness that goes on in there. Yeah, you just fucking suck. Blows my mind that somebody like this not only exists, but also is delusional enough to post it online. So if you do manage to find a setup that works for you on one of the bikes, then just take screenshots of it or take pictures on your phone and then you can copy it over to each and every single brand and it will work exactly the same, uh, which is exactly what I've done. Uh, Dmil sent me a really nice setup for the 450 when I done the HSM factory race the other day. Uh, so I'm, I'm now taking that and moving it over to any bike that I fancy at the time. Just depends on the day which which bike I want to use really. Uh, and some days I maybe want to go down the banana route, other days we're looking at a bit of Kawi, some days it's a Yamaha. All depends on how I feel. So if we take our attention f away from the factory bike slightly and we pay attention to this track. Now this is the first track of Kevin's uh, from this whole series that I'm playing on. This is actually round two. There was a round one which I think was a bit more... Like it was like an SMX vibe, like indoorsy but outdoors at the same time, which I saw a lap of but I have not played myself. I'm very tempted to go back and have a look at it just based on this track alone. Um, but as soon as I played this and qualifying was done, I just I had to message Kevin and just say, like, this is absolutely amazing. Like, it's such a fun track. I saw a few people which I don't mean this in a disrespectful way whatsoever. A few people with not that many hours or that are slightly newer to the, the racing side of things that were complaining about the track being too rough, which I do not agree with at all. I think there is just the right amount of rough on this track. Uh, not so much that it just gives you the most random kick uh, over the bars, for example, or you swap and you just die with no chance of saving it, but enough to make you think about the speeds that you're going. Like you can hit corners very, very fast around this track. However, if you try hitting these braking bumps fast in the wrong place, they'll let you know about it. So you have to be wary of your line choice. You kind of move from one side of the track to the other, trying to find the smooth lines. And overall, I think it is the best track he has ever made. And it's definitely got to be in there with one of the best uh, outdoors tracks that we have on the game. Um, it is on the store, to be fair, but I, I don't, I can't remember the exact number of tracks there are for this whole series uh, I, but there is a season pass for it you know similar to how we had the supercross one and mxgp one etc um so if you're into that sort of thing then yeah by all means go and go and check that out uh, but individually uh, this is a really really fun track for me and i'm very very glad i found it because like i said it it almost takes me back to like beta 16 days of ripping like the kx 250 around tracks like bar harbor all that Huron made just that kind of wide open but not being able to just duct tape your right trigger down everywhere because there's just little things here and there that make you have to think about it. So on the edge, but not to the point where it's like stupidly easy, uh, which is why I was quite surprised. I, I have no idea how long the track had been out or publicly released before the race started. Um, I just know that I went on my MXB, saw that signups were open. This was like two hours before the race was due to start or qualifying was due to start. And I thought, you know what? I'm not tired enough yet, even though it's 2 a.m. Let's, let's have a little race. Uh, so I signed up, went to go and find the track, and it already had the password released. So maybe it was just lucky timing. Maybe everyone got the same amount of time. Maybe I was slow to the party, but either way, I was very surprised, just due to my lack of 250 experience, that I managed to get that top quality spot. And I'm, I am very disappointed, actually, that the servers went down and we couldn't race it on the day, because it means I'm probably not going to do the actual race. The reason being, which I don't know how many times I've mentioned this. So I know I've mentioned it like internally to friend groups, probably more than I have on videos or live streams, but I really dislike doing races in this game where the track has been publicly out for a long time because it, it, it usually becomes a contest of who can put the most amount of time in before the race usually does the best. And that doesn't interest me. I I like where it... Obviously, the... the, the the top of the pass will always rise to the top in one way or another. But I feel like when the track releases maybe 30 minutes before a race, that's when the racing is the best. Like lap times are quite close. Um, people may not have always found the most ideal line, so it opens the racing up a bit more, more opportunity to pass people when people are still trying to work things out in the race. And it's a format that I really find myself benefiting from quite often. Uh, I, I'd, these days, with all of the, uh, the cracked out of their heads or cracked out of their mind kids that play this game now, uh, I know 100% hands down I cannot keep up for quality pace. I, I just can't do it. I've not got it in the bones anymore. I've not got it in the muscle memory. Uh, I'm an old man. Reaction times are a little bit slower. However, what I do think I do well on is when it comes to race time, 
even if I'm really struggling in qualifying to get clean laps in, for whatever reason, when the gate drops, if I'm having a good race, I'll have a really, really good race where I just will barely crash at all and just run consistently good lap times. And it's quite odd, because I don't know at what point in time throughout playing this game that that switch just clicked for me at being better at races. Because when I very first started playing it, we're talking literally about three years ago now, I think it was 2020 that I started playing this game around Christmassy kind of time. Um, I was I was a hot lapper back then, you know, like qualifying was my thing. I'd have really good lap times and uh, quite often I'd have really, really good starts to the races. And then we'd get halfway through and the road would start kicking in and I would just go backwards. I didn't know how to ride in a road. Uh, I think I was just trying to go the same speed the entirety of the race and not change how I approach things. Like these days, it's a lot more, I guess, well known on how you ride deep stuff in this game. But back then it wasn't. It wasn't like public common knowledge we didn't have all these different youtubers and people making i guess tutorial videos and setup videos it was a lot smaller than it is now um so yeah definitely a lot more difficult for me to adapt back then but as time's gone on i definitely i think i've turned into more of a, a racer than a hot lapper overall uh, and i think a lot of that as well comes from not having any desire to sit in testing and just run lap after lap after lap anymore. I just enjoy getting into servers with friends and having a little mess around on whatever track is released on that day. Uh, and that's that's fun for me. That, that is my idea of fun. And I think that's why a lot of the time I, I don't plan live streams a lot of the time. It'll just be as and when I feel like it. Because it could be as simple as me loading up my MXB, going to the race list, seeing, oh, there's a, there's a race in an hour. Yeah, why not? We'll, we'll live stream that. Uh, so if you ever do see live streams from me randomly and you have no idea where it came from, you have there's there's nothing that you've missed. It's just me having no schedule and doing it out of the blue. A hundred and ten percent, I recommend you guys give this track and these bikes a go. Uh, in that com as that combination, obviously I have not tried this uh, track on any other bikes yet. I have no idea how well it rides on other bikes, whether it's 450 factory, 450 OEM, 250 OEM, etc., or CBMX bikes, any of that weird stuff. Uh, but on this bike. Uh, it is so much fun, like so, so, so much fun to the point where I don't think I even want to try it on anything else because I'm worried that it'll ruin it for me. Uh, so massive W to Kevin. And I wanted to say a big thank you to all of you as well. I know it's not been long since the last thank you that I said. However, this one's for different reasons. This one is, as you know, in yesterday's video, and if he was there the day before that's like end of live stream, I uh, turned the face cam on for the first time. Now it wasn't it wasn't long that's what she said. by any means and I believe I've edited into the start of this video, at least that's the plan in my mind. We'll, we'll see if I actually get round to doing that. Um, but I don't think I've seen one person be horrible, which for the longest time that's kind of what I was worried about. Now I'm, I'm not worried about my appearance at all and I think just as a rule if you can make fun of yourself, then it really doesn't matter what other people have to say. And I'm all there for that. You know, being from the UK, if you're friends with people in the UK, it's usually 24-7 abuse that you just throw each other's way. Like I, I always give Charlie like shit, he always throws it back my way. Same with people like Brees, etc. that have seen me in person. And it's just kind of part of the culture, and it's just what you do. So that sort of stuff doesn't kind of get to me. The only thing that I was worried, that I was trying to more mentally prepare myself for, is then when you see like the screenshots and all the memes and the trolling start coming in which uh, there's only been a couple of screenshots so far to be fair but there's nothing been like super horrible yet which is this is probably me opening the door for it in all honesty uh, but i feel like i'm kind of ready for it now but the thank you that i want to say is out there must have been like probably like 50 or so comments on the last video all regarding the face cam and it was all just super super nice and in the saddest way possible, it genuinely made my day and made me wonder why I was stressing about it in the first place at all. Uh, and to see people even going as far as saying your boy's got a strong jawline, I don't know what to say to that because I'm currently 30 pounds heavier than I was at the start of the year when I was gymming every single day. Yeah, I've really fallen off the wagon, but uh, who knows? Maybe maybe now that I'm making more of a an actual appearance on the camera, uh, maybe I can hold myself a bit more liable to that sort of thing. I can't, can't really hide it anymore, can I? Um, and before you say anything, if you are that eagle-eyed, if I do do the face cam at any point throughout this video, yes, I'm wearing the same t-shirt. Disgusting! It happens. I literally just sit here at the computer. You know, I'm not running about getting hot and sweaty. It's not the end of the world. It's just a t-shirt. It's fine. I feel like I need to mention that because I feel like some people might be weird about it. The other thing that kind of sucks is 
anytime I feel like I'm going to live stream now, I, I almost I have to make myself presentable. So usually I'm just sat here in like like usually a t-shirt, maybe like uh, underwear, if, if that. Sometimes I'm literally just wearing no top and just underwear if it's really, really hot. Um, I can't really do that anymore. At least not for free. You're not getting that stuff for free. So yeah, I actually have to make myself look presentable now if I want to turn the camera on, which kind of sucks. But a massive thank you to how nice everybody's been. I really do appreciate it. There's a few people even went as far as uh, messaging me on Discord, congratulating me on it and saying like it is a big thing and that like, it was it was done well. Um, I felt very awkward doing it, but I've seen a few people say that it's probably like the least awkward face reveal that they've seen. So if it comes across as slightly natural, then hey, I'll take it. And I feel like I'm probably making a big deal out of it in this video, but... For, for me, I feel, like, I feel like I'm quite a warrior, so in my own head it, it was a big deal, although well, it probably seems very, very, um, like, it's very, very minimal to other people. But thank yous all round, really, really do appreciate it. Um, video's been doing really well recently as well. I don't, f I think we, ha I had one 8 out of 10 the other day, but the rest of them have all been 5 out of 10 or lower, which is really, really good. It means there's like a good upwards trend on how the videos are doing, which I do think all stems from the different editing style now. Again, only seen one or two people saying they're not the biggest fan. Everyone else has been very, very supportive of it. They say that it's a lot more engaging and it's nicer to watch and keeps them, I guess, glued to the screen for a bit longer than they would be normally. Uh, so I'm going to keep it up for as long as I can. There might be the odd occasion here or there where maybe I'm a little bit of a busy bee throughout the day or maybe I'm preparing to go away to visit my girlfriend again for a few days where I can't edit them as much as I would like just because of time constraints. Um, but for the most part, I'm going to just keep uh, keep going the way I've been going the last week or so. So thank you everyone for all of the very, very kind words. It does mean a lot, especially as this is my day job. You know, you don't want to go into each day being worried about what's going to happen or worried the the numbers aren't going to be where you want them to be just so you can you know have a, like a normal average salary uh, so thank you everyone that comes back every day and keeps watching thank you to the one guy by the way in my discord that every single video that gets uploaded says thank you for another video lens I, I, i'm telling you i appreciate all of you um and i hope you enjoyed this one most importantly like every other one if you did please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new i would really really appreciate it have a lovely rest of the day whatever it is you're up to and roll the outro music